Hey, Mike Caldwell, the marketing medic here. And you know what? I guess it's probably 25 years ago, if you had a business and you didn't have a listing in the yellow pages, your business didn't do very well, did it? If, if your parents uh, needed something, where did they go to find out, right? Where did they, where did they go to find what they needed? They went to the yellow pages. Um, I don't know about you, but I don't have a yellow pages telephone book in my house anymore. I don't know if they still make them. I think there's a yellow pages online, but there's definitely no book in my house anymore. Um, and because what was the yellow pages replaced with? It was replaced with a website, right? So the first people, the first businesses that got websites, they did really well because they were able to give a whole bunch of information to uh, to people looking for stuff, right? It was basically a really awesome, cheap online brochure. But what happened is then everybody got a website right so now you've just got hundreds and thousands of online brochures and so now everybody's on equal playing ground again right so now what we've got going for us is we've got online sales funnels okay now sales funnels are a website but they're a former website that caused the viewer the visitor to um, have some form of call to action okay they uh, funnels are usually only about one thing they're not a huge Spectrum, like a like a website is with a whole online brochure, they're a call to action with one thing in mind. All right, and what we've been led to believe from the uh, from the gurus out there is that if you have an online sales funnel, then you got the key to the vault. You you got a money making machine, right? Because that's basically what happened when websites came out back in the yellow pages days. But the thing is, is a few things have changed since then. Actually, a lot of things have changed since then, and it's not just a matter of having a funnel that allows you to make that money, okay? What, uh, what my friend Todd Brown says is, is that it takes an extraordinary amount of effort to get somebody to take action, okay? Now, think about, I don't know, 10, 15 years ago when the internet was relatively new, and if there was a free online newsletter, everybody was signed up for it, right? Because it was free, and, uh, and free stuff was good. But since then, our email accounts have just been inundated with like just you know email after email after newsletter like it's just too crowded and so nowadays you have to really earn that uh, that email if somebody's going to give it to you right and so you can't just come up with some free report and expect things to uh, to happen for you now going back to the fact that it takes an extraordinary amount of effort to get somebody to take action just think about that for a minute like here in North America, Canada, United States, we're pretty well off. Like, how many things do we absolutely need that we can't live without, right? For most of us, there's not very many, there's not very much, right? It's not like we're in the desert, we haven't had a drink for like three days and we see a glass of water. Now, that would be something that we would need, we do absolutely anything to get. But online sales, there's really not that many things that are like that, okay? Now think about the um, the exit line at at a at a store. Okay, they've got all those impulse buys. They've got all those chocolate bars. Now, if you if your favorite brand and make of chocolate bar is right there, what are the odds you're going to grab that? You know, for a buck, buck forty nine, whatever it costs, there's a pretty good chance that you're going to pick up that chocolate bar because you know what it is. You like that chocolate bar. In the back of your mind, you've got that impulse for some chocolate, so you're going to grab it. Now, what if like you like chocolate and caramel together okay and you've got a favorite brand of chocolate bar that you always buy you see that you're gonna pick that up but what happens if there's another chocolate bar there that you've never seen that wrapper before you've never heard of that maker but it's chocolate and caramel what are the, what is, are the likelihoods that you buy in that it's probably gonna be a lot less right because you don't know if that if their chocolate tastes any good if their caramel is the right thickness or sweetness or whatever so you're not gonna buy it because it takes an extraordinary amount of effort to get somebody to take action. Now, if somebody was at the line there, sat, like talking about the chocolate bar, saying how it's like, you know, Dutch chocolate from the finest chocolatier in the world, well, then you'd be more likely to buy it, right? Um, or if there was free samples there, you could taste it. And you're like, oh yeah, this one little piece is really good. I like to get more. So the thing is is you can't just, if you're selling that no-name chocolate bar at the exit line of the store, you can't just say, like, here's a, here's a chocolate bar. It costs as much as the one that you always buy because people aren't going to buy it. You have to really work to get somebody to, to try that chocolate bar for the first time. 
So why am I talking about talking about chocolate bars? It's because you need to do the same amount of work online. Okay, now if I'm selling the um, iPhone 7 online, how much information do I have to give? You know, none, right? I got the iPhone 7. Everybody's going to buy it from me if I got a good price. But if I'm selling, you know, the uh, Hasselbach 6, most likely nobody's going to buy the Hasselbach 6 from me because they've never heard of it. So I got to get, I got to do a lot more work to to make to make that sale. Okay. So anyway, I just wanted you to think about that when you're doing any form of online marketing. Just think that what you're selling, people don't necessarily need that badly. So you've got to create some sort of emotional and intellectual argument that can convince them that they can't live without what you're offering. All right? I'll, uh, I'll go into this a little bit uh, in more depth later, but just start thinking about that now. Thinking about like what you're selling and how you're offering it. Are you positioning in such a way that your client has enough information to make the sale, that there's enough emotional buy-in, that they really need to have that, and that there's enough intellectual support that they can justify that purchase. All right? So think about that, and I will talk to you at the, on the next video. All right, till then, see you there.